question is really hard. This question is like real hard. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day. Don't worry, the intro has just changed for today. It is still after advent calendar season. We have so many left and I might have just received another one to my doorstep today. I tried to deliver it yesterday and I think I missed the postman and they wouldn't leave it just on my doorstep because <laughs> I think because it is a $600 Christian Louboutin advent calendar. So today we're just gonna have a very chill, relaxed, laid back, get ready with me, catch up, chit chat thing. The boys are snoozing comfortably in their little bed back here and uh, I'm just gonna answer some of the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram and the community tab here on YouTube. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna be slapping some stuff on my face. There are gonna be some items in here that I have incorporated from the advent calendars into my everyday routine. Or my little clippy thing, my hair is driving nuts. This isn't like a solely advent calendar try on or anything. It's just a couple little things that I have uh, been enjoying from the advent calendars. I would do even more items in the advent calendars, uh, but unfortunately I don't really have all that like figured out yet. I don't really have it all organized. Um, I have a box of some stuff and a lot of the advent calendars I've just like stuffed the stuff back into the box, into the box, and then put it away. So eventually I'm sure I'll get around to trying more items to the advent calendars, but today we just have here's a few things. That was a really long introduction. I haven't filmed in a while and I'm nervous. I get really nervous when I haven't filmed for a little bit. All right, first I've been using this eye cream. Did I get this in an advent calendar? We've been doing it for so long it's just kind of running into subscription boxes at this point. This is the Triple Algae Eye Renewal Balm from the Algenist. I don't know. I guess I got this in a calendar. I'm not 100% sure. I've been using it. Do I notice a huge difference? You know what? I feel like my eyes actually do look a little bit better underneath. Maybe just a little less like puffy. Okay. Well, my, my YouTube community page is not wanting to load. So let me go over here to Instagram and start getting some questions from there. I'll definitely come back for the YouTube questions when it decides it wants to work. All right. First question. Have you had any progress on the thing you wanted to pursue instead of buying a house? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I want to think about how to answer this. I have the Murad Hydro Dynamic Ultimate Moisture Cream. And then this is going to be a little bit strange. It's going to be a little bit different, but this is what I've been doing. I've taken this super goop stuff, this glow screen thing, and I've been mixing it into my moisturizer. And that's been my foundation for the past, yeah, I don't know, a couple of days. And I, I, I feel like it works better if I mix it into the uh, moisturizer rather than just like putting it on top. It blends better. So that's what that's what we're going to do. Goopy. So, <laughs> so yes, there has actually been progress. And it's going to be like, it's such like... I feel like it's gonna be really insignificant when I finally reveal what it is. It's not it's not a huge thing, I guess. I mean, I'm personally excited about it. Jeremy's excited about it. Like, my family's excited. But it's not like, I, I don't know, it's not a, a giant thing. The only reason I've decided maybe it's like best not to bring it up until things are finalized is just in case somebody else tries to do the thing that we're doing. It's so confusing. But this Friday, I am actually having a meeting with somebody about the said thing. So hopefully I will have an update for you guys soon. I know that's so frustrating because uh, I mentioned it forever ago and trust me, we thought this was gonna happen a long time ago, but it, it hasn't yet. The progress is being made, things are in the works. It just, for some reason, seems like a better idea just to maybe not talk about it too much before things are, are finalized. I'm so sorry about that. I wish I had like a better, more confirmed uh, response for you guys because a lot of you all have been asking me about that. All right, next up here, we have a question about the dogs and how they were doing, especially Tater. Uh, you know, he's a little he's a little sickly fella, unfortunately. They've been doing okay. They have been doing okay. Rin over there, he, he's doing real good. The only thing that's weird about Rin is he has like an interesting like, um, I don't know, like raptor claw growing off his back paw. It's growing so much faster than any of his other nails and there's like a weird like bump in it and we, we're not quite sure what it is just yet. So we're gonna make him a vet appointment for that. We would have done it a little while ago, but I was really afraid of the, the, like the virus that was going around. So I didn't want them to be exposed to like any other dogs. Now Tater, on the other hand, he's been doing pretty okay, but in the month of December, he did have three separate uh, seizure incidents, which is at least two more in one month than we have been used to them having. Uh, we've kind of gotten it down to a schedule to where like every single month around the same time towards the end of the month or the very beginning of the next month, he was having a seizure. So we kind of got things like un under control in a sense. A lot of the vets said that uh, one seizure episode a month was pretty much considered controlled. So he was having one a month and we kind of knew when it was gonna come so we could be prepared for it. We made sure to keep an extra eye on him during that time of the month. We tried to really make sure that we were home with him and stuff. I mean, he never gets left alone. <laughs> like Literally never, he's either here with us. We never leave him at home alone. He's either at my parents' house if we can't watch him or we're going somewhere or he's at Jeremy's parents' house. So, so he's under supervision at like 100% of the time. But uh, we kind of got it down to where like we knew what to expect and then for some reason in December like 
he had three different episodes and we're, we're not sure why. Nothing changed with his medicine. He had no like extra stress factors. Like I, we, we, have, we have no idea, just three times in December. So uh, I am a little bit concerned about that. I'm really hoping that he's not just becoming used to his medicine and it's becoming less effective because if that's the case, um, there's not really much more as far as medicine they can do for him. He's kind of tapped out. He has as many medications as he can take and pretty much like the highest dosage he can take. So uh, I don't, I don't know what we would do beyond that with the exception of just, you know, being prepared for him to have more seizures a month, which isn't great. He currently is on phenobarbital, Keppra, and potassium bromide. He gets those throughout the day. So he gets a 6 a.m. medicine, 7 a.m., 2 p.m., 7 p.m. He gets two different medicines and then a 10 p.m. medicine. So he gets medicines multiple times a day and the, the vet was kind of just like, well, you know, he's at, he's at the, the tippity top of how many medications he can take. So uh, I think that we are going to probably go back to Cincinnati to the neurologist and we might do the um, brain test thing that they had talked about before. We initially didn't want to do that because he was only like, six or seven months into his seizures. And he was only like a year and a half old, so we thought that might be just too invasive, too early. But because he did have so many in December, I'm thinking going in and getting the testing might be the best route to go. So I am nervous about that. I'm sure they'll do a fantastic job. It just seems like so invasive and scary to me. Like I said, I'm sure they do it a bunch. It's just, it's nerve wracking. They have to put him under and then they would have to like put I guess like a needle into his spine. I don't, I don't know. There's, there's a lot. Um, and I just, it makes me really nervous, but if it would give us a better idea of like what's going on with him, we, we do need to do it. It just, it makes me nervous. The thought of it, but he's doing okay right now. He's just being as tater as tater could be. Um, he's, it's like, honestly having a baby that can walk really good and fast. We try to tater-proof the house as much as we can, but this, but him, he, he's just a sneaky little thing. If you catch him with something in his mouth that he's not supposed to have in his mouth, he'll like, just pretend that it's not in there, or he'll try to swallow really fast to get it down before you can get to him. So he is a lot to keep up with, but he is, he, I love him so much. Both of the boys, they are just have my whole heart. I love them so much. So uh, thank you guys for asking about them. Thank you guys for caring so much about them. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on the whole tater situation when we go to Cincinnati and that kind of stuff and after they do the brain scan and things. And who knows, maybe that brain scan could come back and be like, hey, listen, what he's been dealing with is inflammation and he can take this and be better. And that would be fantastic. Because right now what we're dealing with is just an epilepsy diagnosis which I mean we're throwing everything we can at it um, but unfortunately it seems to not be fully taking care of the problem so we'll do that and we'll, we'll see what happens hopefully hopefully it's good news good results there's a few questions about house hunting and if we're still house hunting we like kind of are like every now and then I'm browsing Zillow but honestly in our area there's been nothing nothing at all of interest there's about a billion and a half new builds like brand new builds some of them not even actually like have come to fruition yet <laughs> Fruition, fruition. It's basically like you're paying for the lot and like house plans, but there's like no actual house there just yet. And they're so expensive. Oh my gosh, they're so expensive. All these new builds, they'll be like 1,700 square feet. All you have to pay is $445,000. No. And I know for a lot of people, that's probably like a good deal, but in this area, that's pretty expensive. I mean, for a while there, we were seeing houses fairly often. Like we really were, you know, on the hunt, but there's just been really nothing recently. Unfortunately, the house hunt has kind of stalled. Oh, this is that pencil. That pencil is supposed to be an eyeliner from the Willy Wonka box. I've been using it for my eyebrows, just like I said I would. Now, some people have asked for an update on the scam house, and honestly, like, there's, there's not really many updates. It's still setting just like it was months ago, with the hole in the side of it. They haven't even attempted to, like, I don't know, like, put up a tarp or something? There's a hole in your house. That can't be good for like moisture and water. Like the brick is chunked off your house. Maybe a tarp, I don't know. Uh, it has not sold. It was pulled off of the market. I honestly, I do feel bad for the guy who was selling it, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, maybe also don't like try to scam people. Maybe don't do that. I feel like we really, really dodged a bullet on that one. Like, especially 
really, you know, I'm not saying that if we bought the house, the car would have still run into it, but if it did, wouldn't that have been that bad? To have gone through this whole thing, poured that like $10,000 uh, concrete wall, and for somebody to slam into the same side the wall was poured on, that wouldn't have been fun. This little spoolie here that I'm using came on the e.l.f. brow pencil that we got in the advent calendar. I did try using the brow pencil itself. It was a bit too light for me, and then it, it, it snapped off and then fell onto the floor, and I can't find it, so that's where that the rest of this is. But it has a spoolie, so that works. As somebody asked what I do with all the stuff from the advent calendars, like I said, most of it is shoved back into the advent calendar, so I really have to go through and sort through all of that. Um, I give some stuff away. I also do sell some stuff on my Poshmark. There'll probably be a lot of stuff okay, coming to Poshmark soon, a whole lot of stuff. I try to make sure I list it for like super, super cheap. I mean, we're talking way, way, way below market price here, just so I can like get rid of some stuff, help a little bit to pay off some of the advent calendars, and then um, you guys get to try out some of the products too for a lower price. So. The you keep an eye out for Poshmark. There should be a bunch of stuff coming soon. There are a ton of questions about the stores and you guys seem to be pretty interested in getting like a store tour and some store updates and that kind of thing. I don't want to like, I guess, I guess this is fine to say. The biggest, the, the big thing, the kind of big thing that I'm excited about, but you guys might not be so excited about, it has to do with the store. It has to do with the store. So there will be hopefully more store updates, that kind of stuff coming soon. Um, I would love to do some store tours and stuff, especially since, you know, the, from the last time you guys saw my store. It looks very different. And now we have two. This question asks what kind of tasks does it take to run the store besides just like helping customers? It takes a lot of tasks. There are so many tasks. Because like our two stores are so very different as far as like how they operate, like apparitions, we have to go out and individually find like all of these items to put into our store. So for that side, there's a lot of sourcing. Some things we are able to get like big bulk quantities at once. Like my dad will travel to different states even to look for records and he can buy several hundred of them at one time. But a lot of it is just a lot of work going into like individually sourcing each of the items to go in that store because we don't have any vendors, there's no booths, anything like that. It's just all the stuff that we find. So once you source it, you have to research it, you have to repair things sometimes. Like I do a lot of the vintage clothing, so I'm like sewing on like buttons and like mending seams and stuff like that. So there's a lot that goes into like each individual item at Apparitions. We do really want to move online as well though. That's going to be interesting. That's going to be real. It it'll be interesting. Just figuring out how to do it like websites or where to sell how to sell packaging shipping like it's it's gonna be a lot and then on like the second main side where we have all of our artisans and stuff our local artisans I've been loving that side of the store it's also been super super fun it's a different feel than like the vintage side but I love both of them but along with having like artisans and stuff on that side we do also have like a boutique aspect to it so I am like ordering boutique items so it's up to me to do like the ordering and the sourcing and all the stuff for that side of the store I'm using this little P. Louise highlight palette from the advent calendar that we got. This is the Bake Your Move eyeliner eyeshadow. What? Highlighter palette. I'm using this one over here in the corner. The stores are fun. They're very fulfilling. I love having my own business. I've always wanted to have my own business and uh, there's just, there's a lot that goes into it. A whole lot. I've had several questions if uh, my husband will ever appear on the channel. <laughs> he will eventually. He will. I do film a lot when he isn't home because I am nervous. I'm a very nervous person. So filming in front of people is very difficult for me and filming like even when like he is an earshot if he has an earshot of me I'm like hey honey would you care to like maybe wear your headphones and play some video games while I film real fast if he's home he's wearing headphones and he's playing video games because I just get so nervous so it definitely would be an interesting uh like challenge for me personally to sit here and talk to you guys like with him setting right here that that will be different but eventually we'll do it we will do it i have been receiving a lot of questions about hair and like my hair loss journey and everything so many questions honestly i might just make a whole video about that i've been trying out different products and different things so i might do a whole video on that it might only you know be interesting to a certain like group of people but hopefully it could like help out somebody so i might just do an entire hair video and put everything all together like the tools that i use and different shampoos and treatments and that kind of thing oh and this question reminded me that i forgot to mention like for the second and main side of the store we also like are making a lot of stuff for the store so like we make candles i'm making hand scrubs we make jewelry we make we make a lot of stuff uh so any any like spare free time that i have i'm also 
making stuff to put into the store. So that's a, that's another thing, another aspect of the store over there. Ooh, best Christmas present I got. I got like a lot of Christmas presents that I've been really wanting. Uh, for Christmas, I asked for fuzzy socks. I asked for sweatpants, um, a neck massager <laughs> or like a neck heating pad. My husband got me all of those, which was fantastic and lovely. My parents got us a drawing of Tater because we already have one of Rin. One of my dad's really good friends is a fantastic artist. He sells a lot of prints and stuff in our store and oh, they commissioned a picture of Tater to be drawn. So he did that for us for Christmas. We already have one of Rin, so now we have a pair of the boys. So that was a really wonderful Christmas gift. And then my mother-in-law got me two framed, beautiful vintage pictures from Edinburgh. One's like a map and then one's kind of like, uh, almost like a lithograph looking of like the city. Gorgeous. And she had them both framed, love those. She also got us a canvas printout of my background, which is one of my favorite pictures of the boys. They're laying there in bed, all so cute. My bro- my brother-in-law. That might be the first time I've ever said that. My brother-in-law, <laughs> Jeremy's youngest brother, got us a really cool print of Edinburgh as well. You will know what we love. We love we like boys, we like these boys, and then we love Edinburgh, Scotland. It's the both the best place. <laughs> I'm also gonna just try out this palette here that we also got in the advent calendars from P. Louise. This is gonna be a very light eye look. I'm just throwing on some basically like a bronzy shade. I could have just used bronzer for this, to be honest. Oh, this is not. <laughs> I just got a I just got a uh, little uh, pop up notification on my phone that <laughs> reminded me of something. So, um, you guys know I, I I don't know if you guys do actually know I have a TikTok. There's like, I don't know, maybe six, seven videos on there. I don't really use it often to post TikToks. Do I use it often to sit there and like doom scroll for many hours? Yeah, I do, I do. I really gotta stop doing that. But <laughs> I might've gone like the tiniest bit viral. I don't know what you consider viral on TikTok, but I might've gone just the insiest bit viral over a video that I posted about what my desktop computer looks like. And I, <laughs> I don't know if people are like mad at me or concerned for me, but I had no idea the reaction to that would be what it was. I was basically just posting for you guys, like the 10 of you that follow me on there. I was just trying to give you all a little bit of insight into like what like my computer and potentially my mind and maybe this table look like. Um, but yeah, it ended up going a little teensy bit viral. I think it has like 1.1 million views right now and people are upset. People are mad at me. You know, I haven't had like a YouTube video hit a million views in I don't know how long, but that daggone TikTok video, it, that had to be the one, didn't it? Had to be the one where I just look silly as heck, completely just like technologically un un uneducated, just fully uneducated about how to do things. That's the one. That had to that had to just go the teensiest bit viral. Oh, this person asked like how I'm doing. I seem to have been sick a lot. I have been. <laughs> I don't know why. <clears throat> I don't know why I've been so sick recently. Um, I've not been feeling great. Like ever since I got whatever was in my chest that one time, it kind of like never fully went away. Look, my cheeks look like landing pads. They're so <laughs> bright yellow. That like never fully went away, and I have been having the worst headaches, and I can't get rid of them. It's like a daily thing. Some days more severe. Some days it's just kind of like a mild like pain in my head, <laughs> an ache, one might say. But like, especially on this side, right here at my temple, like sometimes it'll be stabbing, stabbing pain. Um, we were seeing, unfortunately, a family member in the hospital, which that's been another whole other thing that's been going on, just a very um, scary situation with a very close family member. But we were in the hospital while they were undergoing a, a procedure and I just had this, maybe it was stress? I don't know what it was, um, but it felt like an ice pick stabbing into the side of my head and it was sending um, shooting pains down like up my eyebrow, down my cheekbone and down to my chin. Found out that apparently there's a nerve there, which would make sense because like I could like trace the pain with my finger and as I would trace it, it would send this like burning sensation like all the way through the side of my face. I was like holding water bottles to it and stuff. Very strange. I don't know what's been going on with that, but yes, I have been very sick, super fatigued. I'm, I'm going to the doctor. I need to go to the doctor. That's what I need to do. I need to go to the doctor. I need to get a doctor actually. I need to find a new like primary healthcare person because the only place I've been going is like um have you ever been to a Kroger little clinic? I've officially now two times left the little clinic in tears so I will never be returning to the little clinic. If they work out for you that's great. I think it's just the one lady that's there. It's not so great for me uh so no more little clinic for me. I need to like have like a like a person that I go to and I see often to uh talk about what's going on but yeah I've not been fantastic but um you know I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm doing fine. Uh, there could be so much worse, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> this one says, is it true that your best friend Gabby is an amazing, spectacular, ma majestic dancer? Yes, Gabby, that is true. The most beautiful dancer I've ever seen. <laughs> and then this one, okay, these are both from people I know. How do you feel about becoming Aunt Allie? Which I'm so excited. My little cousin, my like six foot tall, nearly 30 year old little cousin, Zach, is gonna be having a baby and I'm so excited. His wife is wonderful and fantastic and we live nearby so we can babysit. There's a lot of questions about babies in here. Um, I don't know if we will or when or if we can have babies, but we will be available to babysit my cousin and his wife's baby whenever they need. I was gonna do some type of little glitter, so I think I'm gonna go back in here and see if I can just find, yeah, this one right here, seems like a nice just little glitter, just for a little bit of sparkle. Let me mix it in with that one. I just really haven't been using a ton of makeup recently, so this is like the most eyeshadow I've done in quite some time. <laughs> There's a question here about are there any good beauty subscription boxes out there anymore, and I do think there are. Um, I've been really enjoying some of the more like indie one like for instance it's too far over there like for instance this ice cream beauty one i always have a really good time with this one it's a little bit different it's like a smaller scale kind of beauty box so you might not be seeing you know your big name beauty brands in it or anything like you with ipsy but some of the more indie subscriptions i have been really enjoying and i still do enjoy even though we've had like such you know an interesting past i still do really enjoy getting ipsies and stuff i think they're fun to unbox i think they're fun to see what's inside and sometimes they are really really good they truly are really really good it's Sometimes there's some issues, but I still do enjoy getting ipsies and stuff. I was thinking about doing a video of like all the boxes I'm gonna be canceling this year. I was gonna do it before the start of the new year, but it didn't happen. It's fine. <laughs> so I'm not doing a video like basically where I go through all the subscriptions I plan on canceling and then like canceling them there, right then and there with y'all. <laughs> so that way I have to be held accountable. There are several that I do wanna like, you know, drop the ax on this year and what last year as well. I just forgot to do it. So this is the Rare Beauty um, Ice. Why can't I think of words? Mascara sample that we got in one of the Mavin calendars, I don't know. And I actually do like this mascara. I still, still think the Monsieur Big by Lancome is my favorite mascara of all time, but this one is actually really good. I feel like I'd probably like it even better if I had the full size, because this little, this little nubbin is kind of hard to get into lashes and stuff. But I feel like it does a really good job giving like length and volume and separates nicely. So yeah, I like this mascara. There's a lot of questions in here about married life and how like our first year married is going. Oh, my rings are off. It's because my fingers swell because I've gained so much weight. That's another thing. Well, first of all, first of all, let me say, married life's been going great. We've been having a great time. Like, not much honestly has changed because we did live together like before we got married and stuff. Um, but it's been great. I have no complaints. But uh, I have definitely uh, gained some weight since we got married, since we went on our honeymoon. I think the honeymoon kind of set it off. Like we ate whatever we wanted to and then I just didn't stop doing that when we got home. Um, and I personally am not super comfy right now. I'm just not super comfy. I think you can be, you know, whatever size floats your boat. It doesn't matter to me. Um, but I personally, in this size that I am right now, not feeling super comfy. And um, I think I would like to address that. I'm thinking about potentially doing vlogs. I've been thinking about it for a long time because I've had a vlog channel for a really long time. I've just never posted anything on it. But I have been heavily considering doing vlogs, uh, not just of like, you know, a health journey or something like that, but just like a, my life, just vlogging my life over on the vlog channel. And part of that could be potentially a health journey kind of thing. I understand if that's not, you know, what you're into and stuff, but I was just thinking about maybe, maybe doing something like that. Let me know what you guys think about that down below in the comments. I feel like I said the word about about a thousand times just then, sorry. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's a throwback. Still very curious about what happened with your cult crushes box. Basically, Ricky's cult crushes, which I f I'm, I'm okay like saying the brand and everything now because I'm not, I don't think they exist anymore. Ricky's might still exist, but definitely the cult crushes box doesn't. They haven't for quite some time. But basically like years ago, they pitched me the idea of me curating a subscription box. I was like, that sounds fun. I was like, I'll do that. This was back like in the subscription box heyday. I was like, this would be super cool. They told me I was gonna have like my pictures and like Ricky's in New York and stuff. And I was like, oh, that sounds so awesome. Actually, okay, that part, I, I said it was awesome, but I also was very nervous about that. I don't love my picture being taken. So uh, they told me to send them like a nice high quality image. <laughs> so I think I took like a thousand pictures myself with my camera in my room to try to get one that I kind of liked to send to them. But yeah, they they talked it up real big. They're like, you get to pick out what products are gonna be in the box. And you know, you're gonna be like a spokesperson person for Ricky's and all this kind of stuff and I was like that sounds really fun because we did do Ricky's unboxings uh, on the channel and I did enjoy the subscription when it like came down to it I really didn't get to pick out like anything in the box itself they're putting stuff in there that I definitely would have like never picked and you guys would have been like what the heck why would you put this in a subscription box it was like rose scented things fake lashes like all this stuff 
that I expressly like did not enjoy. They wanted me to be the one that announced the price increase. They're like, oh, by the way, can you announce that we're going from like $11 to like $14? And I was like, I don't want to be the one to break the news to people <laughs> that you guys are increasing your prices. And my picture was also never in stores in New York, which, you know, is kind of like, oh, that's a bit of a bummer, but at the same time, maybe I was okay with that one. Maybe I was fine with that one. In the end, like I still have all the emails and stuff from that. There is, there is so much more, but it was just, it was kind of a mess. And that was my only opportunity ever to like curate a subscription box and it just it went awry it definitely went awry <laughs> so yeah that's that's pretty much what happened with that um if you guys got that box forever ago and you were disappointed with it i am so very sorry but i had no choice i, di I didn't get to pick like anything in that box besides maybe like one palette perhaps i might have gotten to pick the color or i i, I didn't get to pick anything really <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> but i did i was very nervous about it but i did express to them i was like hey i'm very like known on the, my channel for not liking rose scented things i'm very known on my channel for saying i have no idea how to apply fake lashes so like we can't we can't put those things in the box and it, they'll just say it came from me like we can't do that you know it was it was fine it just <laughs> it wasn't what i was anticipating but man that's a throwback that was years ago all right for lips these three things here from the elf advent calendar i've been using these non-stop for my lip combo like look how nearly empty this little shiny gloss is i truly have been using these non-stop i wasn't a fan of that advent calendar i really think that that's a bit of a ripoff but i do like these lip products all together so it's like a three-step process though so first we have this little stain that gets applied to give the lips a bit of color let that dry down a bit <laughs> Ooh, if you could only pick one advent calendar which would it be this question is really hard this question's like real hard oh part of me wants to say P.O.E. is so bad but then the other part of me wants to say Vogue and I almost feel like I'm leaning towards Vogue. I, re I really don't know. I'm gonna have to like sit down and like really like look at everything side by side, take everything out of the boxes and look at them and be like which one of these advent calendars do I truly think is like the best advent calendar? Because like P. Louise killed it with the packaging. They killed it with the exclusivity. They killed it with the preciousness. Just the most precious advent calendar ever. But at the same time, I like, I really enjoyed Vogue too. So I, I don't know. I feel like I might do a whole video on like the top five or like the bottom five advent calendars for 2023. And then we'll just, we'll just have to see because I'm not 100% sure. Let me know what you guys thought down below. P. Louise, Vogue, a different one that we weren't talking about just then. Which one was your favorite. I'm gonna still have more to go. Okay, so after the stain, I top it with this e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine in the shade Aesthetic? What does that say? I don't know what that word is. I've never seen that word before in my life. Oh, or maybe that's just a different way to say aesthetic in a different language. Aesthetic? So I throw a little bit of this on there because it's purple. It kind of neutralizes the red just a little bit, but the red makes the purple not so purple. And then over top of it, I put on this gloss. I don't know why this has just become my favorite like go-to lip look, but it, it has. I don't know why I like this lip look so much. I just do. Um, I think like in real life, it looks like just like regular, like a lip, like a lip that's been kind of chapped. Maybe you're a touch cold with like a shiny lip gloss on it. And I don't know why I like that look, but I do. This question goes perfectly with the final item that I'm going to be trying on today. It says, I would like to know what things you found from advent calendars that are so good you buy in full size. I haven't bought any of them just yet. I honestly and truly don't buy a ton of like makeup stuff because I just use what I get in subscription boxes and advent calendars. So I tend like if I run out of something that I've used from a subscription box or an advent calendar, I just move on to the next thing in that section of like a different one besides my mascara. Like I pretty much just repurchased mascara and that's about it. But that being said, this Dagon perfume smells so good. I think it smells so good and I'm a little bit sad because I've not had it that long. Look how much I've already used of it. This little thing's 50 bucks. This is the Love Don't Be Shy by Killian perfume and I think it smells phenomenal, but it's so expensive, so expensive. I really should just be saving it for like special events, but I think it smells so good. I use it all the time and that's like why I'm already down this much of this $50 spray bottle. Come to find out apparently like Rihanna loves this scent or something and if I can smell like Rihanna that's the closest I'm ever gonna come to being anything like Rihanna so um that's fun but this smells so good and I am kind of tempted to buy a full-size bottle but holy cannoli is that expensive is this liquid so expensive I think a, a full-size bottle is like a few hundred bucks how much is it it's a lot <sighs> yeah 1.7 fluid ounces of it which typically there's like a 1.7 fluid ounce and like a 3.4 ounce bottle of perfume that's just like the sizes they come in 
Then 1.7 fluid ounces is $290. I don't know if I can justify it. I don't know if I can justify it. <laughs> Some of these reviews, they're like, yeah, it smells beautiful, but it doesn't last. And I don't think it lasts very long. I don't. So that's probably why it's down this far. Cause like, you know, every now and then I'll just like a couple times a day, just just because it smells so good. But it doesn't last super long and $290 is incredibly expensive. And it's not like, you know, I'm buying like a the Christian Louboutin advent calendar. That's a business expense. It's something for my channel. This perfume, if I just bought it for myself, that's just an expense. That's just me spending money. It's just me spending $290. That's that's the difference between that. All right, you guys, that was my video full of blabbing. Um, I, you know, sometimes I film these things and I'm like, am I even gonna post that? So we'll see, we'll see if I post it. If I don't, I'll answer all of y'all's questions in the community tab and stuff on, on here on the YouTubes. So that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so very much for watching. There are so many more advent calendars to come and I just hope you guys stay tuned for those. Please go ahead and consider subscribing if you would not mind. I mean, the absolute world to me and Tater and Ren. And I just hope you guys have have a lovely, wonderful, fantastic day, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye!